Hello friends, welcome. In this video, I will talk about what is ISPS code and what are its objective. I will share the important points in a way that will be easy to remember for you guys. So let's get started. ISPS refers to International Ship and Port Facility Security Code. The code was adopted after SOLAS Chapter 11 Part 2, Part A and B, which relate to these special measures to enhance maritime security. In this context, the principles behind ISPS code is very similar to the ISM code on board the ship. However, ISPS code emphasizes the security of the persons on board, security of the ship and security of environment in that particular order. And before I move ahead, I would like to discuss a tricky question. Sometime this question has been asked during a survey or certain interviews that if your ship is being attacked by the pirates and it hits you with a grenade and there is fire on deck and they are still firing or they may attack the ship and hijack it what will be your action? For such a situation the answer is in the first paragraph last line it says that ISPS code emphasizes the security of the persons on board security of the ship and security of the environment in that order so if you are in a situation where there is fire on board, fire itself means that either your ship is at risk or the people on board are at risk. So wherever you find any doubt that there is a contradiction between safety and security, safety shall be given the priority. Moving ahead, the ISPS code was implemented by IMO on 1st July 2004 as a comprehensive set of measurements for international security by prescribing responsibilities to government authorities, port authorities, shipping companies and the seafarers. Thus the code helped forming a team between the governments, port authorities and the ship and the seafarers for their own security. The ISPS code applies to the following types of ships which are engaged on international voyage. Any passenger ship including high speed passenger craft, cargo ships, including high-speed passenger craft of 500 gross tonnage and upward and mobile offshore drilling units and finally the port facilities serving such ships engaged on international voyage. So this is quite clear that ISPS code applies when a ship is engaged on international voyage or if the facility is serving ships which are engaged on international voyage. So if there is a risk of importing some terrorists from some other country, then the ISPS code will apply. Couple of things I would like you to know about the ISPS code. One point is quite well known that after the tragic event of 9-11, the Twin Tower attack in America, the International Maritime Organization in November 2001 unanimously agreed to the development of new measures relating to the security of the ships and of the port facilities. And thus through all those processes, ISPS code came into existence. However, the second point is that this was not really the first security incident. There has been many security incidents in the past related to the shipping industry. The first such attack was in 1985 when it was done on a cruise ship, Echile Loro. The Maritime Safety Committee issued guidance after that incident on the security of cruise ships and the ports that they use. The guidance which was released in 1985 was very similar to what we are doing right now. The appointment within a government of a designated authority responsible for the cruise ships and cruise port security. There was appointment of an operator security officer by shipping companies. There was appointment of a shipping security officer for each cruise ship. There was undertaking of ship security survey of each cruise ship like our safety assessment right now. There was preparation of a ship security plan for each cruise ship and it was approved by a designated authority within the government. There was appointment of port facility security officer. There was a port facility security survey. There was further a port facility security plan although it may be called with a little bit different name. And both these incidents are mentioned in the Guide to Maritime Security and ISPS Code. Moving on to the next question, 
that what are the objectives of the ISPS code. So here are the objectives. Number one, to establish an international framework, including cooperation between contracting governments and shipping and port industries to detect security threats and take preventive measures. Second, to establish respective roles and responsibilities of the contracting government, shipping and port industries for ensuring maritime security. Then to ensure early and efficient collection and exchange of security related information. Then to provide methodology for security assessment so as to have a plan in place to react to changed security levels. Then finally to ensure confidence that adequate and proportionate maritime security measures are in place. And to remember these five objectives, let's think logically. See the objective of ISPS code is to secure the shipping industry. And how that can be done if you were the one who was designing a code to secure the shipping industry, what will you do? And as you know, the shipping industry is run by the flag administration. Flag administration is nothing but a contracting government which is part of the IMO. So it has to start with the contracting government forming a cooperation with shipping and port industries and telling them that this is the code we are going to work as per this and as per the code we need to detect security threats and take preventive measures because everyone was worried after the 9-11 attack that if two small planes in comparison to the ship can do so much of destruction what can happen if two big ships carrying huge amount of oil or some other dangerous cargo is under the control of the terrorist. Thus detection of security threats and preventive measures had become the priority. There are so many different industries are involved. There has to be different roles and responsibilities in all those industries. So contracting government, they have to establish roles and responsibilities within the government. Then port facility has to do the same thing and shipping industry has to do the same thing. Thus you know that we have the company security officer, ship security officer, port facility security officer, etc. These are the people who have the roles and responsibilities defined so that they can ensure maritime security. And now that the roles and responsibilities are defined, what will be the next logical step? Next logical step would be communicating security related information with each other. And once the system is established, we have to work on the individual strength and defenses, thus providing a security assessment system so that a plan can be created and the vessel or the port facility is ready in case there is an attack. And finally, the objective of ISPS code was to ensure confidence that adequate and proportionate maritime security measures are now in place. I hope this was a useful video for you. If you have any feedback, suggestion or comment, then please do write down below. All the best for your exams. And as always, thank you for watching.